once upon a time. And imagine if you can, a steep-sided valley cluttered with giant, spiky green pine trees and thick, green grass that reaches to the top of your socks so that when you run, you have to bring your knees up high, like running through water. Wildflowers spread their sweet heady perfume along the gentle breezes and bees hum musically to themselves as they cheerily collect flower pollen. People are very happy here and they work hard, keeping their houses spick and span and their children's faces clean. This particular summer had been very hot and dry, making the lean farm dogs sleepy and still. Farmers whistled lazily to themselves and would stand and stare into the distance, trying to remember what it was that they were supposed to be doing. By two o'clock in the afternoon, the town would be in a haze of slumber, with grandmas nodding off over their knitting and farmers snoozing in the haystacks. It was very, very hot. No matter how hot the day, however, the children would always play in the gentle, rolling meadows. With wide-brimmed hats and skin slippery with sunblock, they chittered and chattered like sparrows as they frolicked in their favorite spot. Now, their favorite spot is very important to this story because in this particular spot is a large, long, scaly rock that looks amazingly similar to a sleeping dragon. The children knew it was a dragon. The grown-ups knew it was a dragon. The dogs and cats and birds knew it was a dragon. But nobody was scared because it never, ever moved. The boys and girls would clamber all over it, poking sticks at it and hanging wet gum boots on its ears but it didn't mind in the least. The men folk would sometimes chop firewood on its zigzag tail because it was just the right height and the ladies weaving group often spun sheep fleece on its spikes. Often on a cool night, when the stars were twinkling brightly in a velvet sky and the children peacefully asleep, the grown-ups would settle for the evening with a mug of steaming cocoa and a soft cushioned armchair. Then the stories about how the dragon got there began. Nobody knew for sure, there were many different versions depending on which family told the tale, but one thing that everybody agreed on was this. In times of trouble the dragon will wake and free the village by making a lake. This little poem was etched into everybody's minds and sometimes appeared on tea towels and grandma's embroidery. The days went by slowly, quietly and most importantly, without any rain. There had been no rain in the valley for as long as the children could remember. The wells were starting to bring up muddy brown water and clothes had to be washed in yesterday's dish water. The lawns had faded to a crisp biscuit color and the flowers drooped their beautiful heads. Even the trees seemed to hang their branches like weary arms. The valley turned browner and drier and thirstier every hot, baking day. The townsfolk grew worried and would murmur to each other when passing with much shaking of heads and tut toots. They would look upward searching for rain clouds in the blue, clear sky, but none ever came. The tale of the dragon cannot be true, said old Mrs. Grey Whistle, the shopkeeper. It hasn't moved an inch, I swear, replied her customer, tapping an angry foot. It was now too hot for the children to play out in the direct sun and they would gather under the shade of the trees, digging holes in the dust and snapping brittle twigs. The dragon will help us soon, said one child. He must do something, agreed another. I'm sure he will. They all nodded in agreement. A week went by with no change, the people struggling along as best they could. Some were getting cross at the dragon and would cast angry, sideways looks at it when passing. The villagers were becoming skinny-eyed and sullen. Meanwhile, the children had a plan. Quickly and quietly, they moved invisibly around town, picking and plucking at the fading flowers. With outstretched arms and bouquets up to their shins, they rustled over to where the giant rock lay, as still as ever. The boys and girls placed bunches of flowers around the dragon in a big circle. They scattered petals around its head and over its nose, then danced around and around it, skipping and chanting the rhyme that they all knew so well. In times of trouble the dragon will wake and save the village by making a lake. The searing heat made them dizzy and fuzzy and finally they all fell in a sprawling heap at the bottom of the mound. They looked up at the rock. Nothing happened. A dry wind lazily picked up some flower heads and swirled them around. The air was thick with pollen and perfume. A stony gray nostril twitched. I saw something, cried the youngest boy. They stared intently. An ear swiveled like a periscope. The ground began to rumble. Look out. 
run, run. The children scampered in all directions, shrieking and squealing, arms pumping with excitement. The rumbling grew and grew. The dragon raised its sleepy head. It got onto its front feet and sat like a dog. It stood up and stretched, arching its long scaly back like a sleek tabby cat. It blinked and looked around with big kind, long-lashed eyes. And then its nostrils twitched and quivered again. The older folk were alerted by the screams and shrieks. The ladies held up their long skirts to run and the men rolled their sleeves up and soon the whole town stood together in a tight huddle at the foot of the hill, staring up at the large beast with mouths held open. Ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-ah-